shit. Internet apologists say. Oh boy, and they be saying some shit, y'all. And let me tell you, we're going to be talking about one of uh, my favorite internet apologists to to actually talk about. Uh, this comes from our friend of the show. Um, that would be um, Hemet Meta, a friendly atheist, who is referencing uh, Greg Locke, who recently had a um, a, a sermon where he entitled it why <laughs> i just... told <laughs> i know i had to had to breathe yeah. for him, but it was why i told halloween to go to hell <laughs> yeah go, go ahead get it out y'all i mean the out. titles yeah, get it out. <laughs> now, let me just tell you that Greg Locke never disappoints uh, when it comes to saying some shit. I, I swear, if I had a dollar for every wackadoodle thing that comes out of this man's mouth, I'd be, I would be able to retire. Seriously. <laughs> um, so with this sermon entitled Why I Told Hell to uh, Halloween to Go to Hell, um, he prefaces that he will be uh, theologically controversial. Uh, he comes from foundational scriptures of 2 Corinthians 6 and e Ephesians 5. Um, but he also says that he doesn't want to shepherd you in your bedroom or your living room. <laughs> that is what he says. And he doesn't tell you what to wear, where to eat, or where to go. And if there is a church that does that, that is a cult. Say amen. Amen. No, yes. I, I agree with him on that one. <laughs> Yes, mm, yes, yes, amen. Yeah, yeah. yes, amen. But 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 we're not even going to talk about how he was telling people not to wear a mask at his church and don't get vaccinated. Wow. But you know, I, but that's neither here nor there. Now, in this particular uh, article that Hammett writes about, he he talks about a specific um, a story that um, Greg implores to his uh, followers uh, on said. Uh, uh, hell, uh, Halloween go to hell day. And um, I'm, I'm just going to read a little bit from the article uh, from, and this is what, you know, Greg said, uh, parents could literally give over one of their children for a demonic sacrifice. Mm -hmm. You study if I'm not telling you the truth. I, I wish I could do his voice, but I, I'm not that great at it. But so I'm just going to read regularly. <laughs> this would even have to give one I'm sorry, they would even have to give one of their children over to a demonic sacrificial, uh, sacrificial system or the treat was their virgin daughter to be raped by demons. Did you hear yeah. me? It, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And basically he was talking about uh, in the sermon um, where they got uh, the, the term trick or treat which if you guys get a chance to watch it, that is absolutely not true. Uh, I'll go on. And then he tells a story about a girl that he knows in this town. Oh, yeah. Which yeah. We, we, we have no idea what town this is. Um, that will pull, that will put that. This uh, yeah, this town. You know, that's all you need to know. Uh, that will put her hand on a mile high stack of Bibles and let you know that every night for over a year, she was raped in her bedroom by a demon and it changed her life tragically forever. And uh, no, again, that did not happen. And uh, then he says, I'm telling you that this mess is a reality in w the witchcraft world and they know it, they. <laughs> people, they know it. And they don't no. want us to expose it but la di da da the cat's out of the bag, Jack. The black cat's out the bag now. Why the cat got to be black? I, anyway. You know, I, I, I was kind of wondering that myself, no, I but I didn't right. say anything. <laughs> like, why the cat got to be black, Greg? But anywho. Uh, <laughs> then he... <laughs> it's a fair question. Mm, it is. <laughs> being, in, being, being in pagan and Wiccan and stuff myself for many years, black cats are synonymous with, with witches. Oh yeah, that, I, still I did a tongue in cheek. Yeah, tongue yeah, I know, <laughs> still, but why gotta be black? And that's okay. <laughs> so here's what would happen: you either give your child, or you would give your virgin daughter. 
And do you know what the Druids would do in return? They would place a pumpkin starting with a gourd and they would place the pumpkin on your porch with a face of a demon on it. And if you had obeyed the sacrificial satanic system, they would then put a light inside of the demon so it would pass over your house. And this is the cultural history what? behind... <laughs> The jack o' lantern, <laughs> and if you did not, uh, and if you did not give them the treat, the demon on you will play the trick, and this is where we get the phrase no. "trick" or um, treat. "citation needed," please. Uh, none of that is true. <laughs> no, not no. a word of it. No, it's, it was, no. it's like he's trying to cross what Passover in there with it. You mark you know, the door with yeah, pumpkin mean, it, it, blood and and. <laughs> Let's just throw quite the act of imagination. Sam Hain goes over your house. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. He steals he, uh, the candy from the neighbors. I don't know. What the fuck he, are you talking about? He he did do in the sermon. Um, it's not in this uh for the full sermon, because I actually watched it. I know, I know. You, you please wow. take pity on me. But I, 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 tr I tried. I, yeah, I, did it. I am 30 yeah. seconds into Good it. Now. Yeah. I I, I I let me just can I show you the face that I had the entire sermon? Sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I believe it. But he did do that whole, you know, he repeated, he kept on repeating the word San Haim, San Haim. And I was just like, what are you, is this like Candyman or, you know, Bloody Mary, I want your kid dead or type stuff? I, I you know, all of a sudden, like, uh, San Haim is about to come out the mirror and come get you. I mean, I don't know, Greg, you tell me. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, but somebody, please take this away from me right now. Take this cup that it may pass it over me, Jason. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I kind of wanted to bring in a little bit, you know, um, tis the season, right? You know, we're getting into the holiday season. Um, I just went to a Home Depot the other day and, uh, you know, I feel like instead of talking about uh, Halloween, we're just going to go right into Christmas. And we're going to go. So I, I looked up on the History Channel. um, uh, I think it was Neil, you brought up the History Channel, the history of uh, Halloween and trick-or-treating. Mm -hmm. and, and that was that was really great. Um, but there was some interesting stuff uh, about Christmas in that, you know, back before uh, we were uh, a country, back when we were colonies and, and, and back further still, Christmas celebrations were more like a, a Mardi Gras kind of event. Uh, there was there was drinking. There was uh, lots and lots of drinking. Uh, you know, some people would say that there's there's debauchery, and you know, it, it it felt very kind of like what people like Locke would say Halloween has turned into. Um, they would find a beggar, or apparently a student is said in here. I don't know why a student had to be there, but they would be the, crowned the Lord of Misrule which just sounds like a whole bunch of fun if you ask me. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, <laughs> sign me up. And and what they would do is they would go around, uh, you know, uh, poor people would go around to homes of the rich uh, demanding drinks, demanding treats. Um, otherwise, they would terrorize them with mischief. Now, okay, yes, they didn't mm. use the words trick or treat, but that sounds awfully familiar, doesn't it? And so I'm thinking, okay, instead of banning this straw man of a holiday that, uh, you know, Greg Locke has, has pretty much created, yep. why don't we go ahead and, and ban the historical Christmas? Which, I mean, technically we already did because it's not what it was. But, you know, he should be more upset about the historical oh wait a minute but history doesn't matter to guys like him does it no it, it doesn't. doesn't you you can tell him, well i mean he's already gone uh very vocal against uh critical race theory as well so obviously he doesn't give you know a flying crap about any kind of history <laughs> Right. Well, yeah. he just made up a whole history about Halloween right now uh, exactly. on this whole. It, it was Locke complete. lives in his own world. He really does, and, and he calls that Lockology. He yeah. calls I, that Lockology. He, you he know, he, 
Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree, Neil. Oh, the victimization that he faced going into a Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> He's lucky I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know about the victimization. Dunkin' Donuts is mine. Oh, that's a different uh, segment. No oh, okay, cool. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get there. <laughs> you mentioned even Christmas. I mean, like, we haven't gotten there yet. Remember, we still need to see a stage a whole war on Christmas coming up. So you, every all everyone out there, let's get prepared for that. I'm sure for my year. bail act right now. Good. Very good. You know, I, I'm about to do something paganist with my tr tree. I don't know. Oh, I'm going to actually have a tree. Yeah. Shoot, my friend does. He puts a, instead of like an angel or a star on the um on the on the top of the tree, he puts Mr. Hanky, <laughs> the Christmas poo. The Christmas poo. <laughs> you can put anything. Mr. Hanky, yeah. Christmas poo. <laughs> so I'm, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's kind of funny, like how when when you listen to him tell this revisionist history of um of Halloween in, in of itself, like he completely skips how even the um um how even the halloween had like uh roots in christianity it it kind of like christmas no. yeah no, no, yeah we no. don't want to talk about that but i mean because no, like no. <laughs> I, I mean because like you know <sighs> it's be, celtic in origin Yes, Celtic in origin. However, when um, that region became uh, Christian around 1000 uh, CE, they mm -hmm. uh, the church kind of enfolded the uh, Sanhain into their um, into their traditions, and it became All Hallows Eve, right? Uh, Eve before evolved into what we yeah, yeah what we right, and and you know to all uh, to All Saints Day, and then you know the next day All Souls Day. So it you know it, it came it became like you know Christian in in some shape way or form but we ain't gonna talk about that but you know whatever yeah no, oh, it's what you got talk. they can they can you know <laughs> all right so i have two different points um one is a lot darker so let me start off with that one and then i'll end with the lighter one um i just think the fact that he's making up this absolutely bullshit story about someone experiencing sexual assault. Um, I, as a person, take that very, very, very seriously when someone says that that has happened to them. And the fact that he's just throwing that word and that um, horrendous, horrific situation just around willy-nilly and just absolutely lying about it, it just, that that's what boils my blood. Um, I cannot stand the I cannot stand the uh, the just diminishing of people who have experienced sexual assaults um, stories, and it just oh, oh I can't. Okay, so lighter note, um, <laughs> I thought it was especially um, interesting and kind of funny that if you actually see the video, which I encourage everybody go watch it for yourself, um, oh. he okay. he is so <laughs> funny because he's like being all dramatic and like straight faced and just pointing at the ground and then like raising his voice and then having dramatic pauses. And I'm just like, Oh my gosh, I can't, I can't, I'm getting secondhand embarrassment for him because I can't walk <laughs> with a straight face. And I'm like, how can he say this without bursting into laughter because of how absolutely who buys this? It is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Even if you're Christian, this is ridiculous. I, I just that that part I could not I couldn't even get through the whole video. It was just I the secondhand embarrassment was too bad. He is a showsman. I mean Yeah, he is. Say say what you will, and we can definitely say a whole lot and, and probably even more past uh the the hour and a half that we get here, but he is a showsman. He he knows how to rile up his audience. Yeah that that he it, he is quite animated on stage yeah. uh I, he is um loud and obnoxious <laughs> and uh <laughs> and he is definitely some uh something uh to watch uh if 
And, and I would encourage everyone, again, the show notes are going to have the link to the article that has the video clip that we were talking about. Um, so, you know, please go ahead and um, take a look at it. Um, but, you know, I just want to just get, you know, everyone's just final thoughts on this one as we go ahead and round it up. Why don't we go ahead and start with you, August? Sure. Um, yeah, I think it's horrific that he's just throwing around um, sexual assault and making light of it almost. Although he's being serious about it, he is lying about it mm -hmm. and using it as like a manipulation tactic to his audience. And I just find that wrong on every single level that there is. But I also think his way of preaching is hilarious. And I kind of question the critical thinking skills of his audience that are buying this without realizing how ridiculous he sounds so ditto neil yep <laughs> yeah i i've pretty much said all i'm gonna say about it is the only thing i could close with this is fuck greg Locke. that's all i can tell you well, you guys are dick i'm sorry but he is sorry not sorry agreed and Jason. <laughs> well, like I said, looking at the history of, of Halloween versus the history of, of Christmas, I I I don't know. I, I kind of almost want to say I, I I agree with uh, with Locke and um, just say you know down with Halloween and hail Christmas. 